Lesotho's most anticipated 11th National Assembly will convene today. This parliamentary sitting will see the highest number of new faces that hold no political credentials whatsoever. All eyes will be on the election of the Speaker and Deputy, which uh, set the tone, the inauguration of the new Prime Minister. Well, joining us from outside the parliamentary precinct is SABC reporter Rapilang Khadebe. Uh, Rapilang, great to have you. What can we expect from Parliament's first sitting today? Um, learning, I, I lost the last part of you, but I think uh, as the intro says, I'm not too far from the parliament. We've had to wait a bit because now the logistics going crazy. So we just took a good shot off Maseru, not too far from the parliament. Uh, the expectation today I anticipate is what you would need uh, is to make sure that the speaker is elected and the deputy speaker, because this is what will set the tone as to who now the, is, is, is supporting the majority. And as confirmed, the RFP will likely have their prime minister as an elected person uh, that will stand in as the advice of His Majesty will now appoint him and inaugurate him as the Lesotho's uh, prime minister on the 11th parliament. Um, what do you think? Obviously today is a big day, but what yeah. do you think? Yes, hi, Rapalang. Do you think uh, the top of the agenda today, what, what will that be? Absolutely, yes, you're right. I think the concentration will be the swearing in of the new cabinet members, of, of the new members of parliament, not cabinet, uh, because it is only then that they can have a caucus actually that can now form the cabinet and that uh, on Friday then we are hoping that it will be the inauguration. So the, the topic today I think the concentration will be on the election of the speaker because once they are now sworn as fully fledged members of parliament it's only then that they can have the mandate that they can actually form official government uh, which will now present the Prime Minister. There have been some reports of electoral authorities in Lesotho saying they incorrectly allocated parliamentary seats after the uh, October 7 election. Where is this matter now? Yes, it was quite a topical subject. IEC called the affected parties and told the second biggest parties which had lost three seats according to the uh, PR, which is the reallocation of the proportional representation in Parliament, and told that using the quota they were using, uh, they had been awarded three seats more than they, they should have. And that means those reallocation will now go to other, other smaller parties. Just finally, um, the, the, the IEC also asking the court to postpone a special meeting of Parliament's National Assembly scheduled for today. What can you tell us about that? And, and then also if you sort of, while we, we wrap up with you, tell us about the prospects of the inauguration next Friday. Yes, indeed. Um, the, the, the challenge was that those who had been confirmed earlier to be attending and to be sworn in and as members of parliament had challenged that until the court actually decides whether the, the, the calculation that was used, the quota that was used is appropriate. They wanted to stop the parliament uh, to not swear in because it means people who may not be party, who may not be uh, legible to actually participate in the election of the new prime minister may be participating when we know for sure that they probably are not eligible. But those who had now been consulted to say that they are the ones who will now be allocated those seats, they also challenged and went to, to court and said they want to be party to the proceedings 
which is for today. But I think the court handled that in a more cautious set. Look, two things will happen. The inauguration will continue as planned on, fri on Friday. Uh, but most importantly today, the, the parliament will have a formal initial sitting. So while others, those, some of those logistics are, are being underway, I think it will now be up to the Speaker of Parliament to now assume the position of actually directing which way uh, the procedures will go because there is now separation of powers. The court does also, or the judiciary does not also want to be seen to be dictating to the parliament such that as soon as the parliament continues it can have its own power to follow its own bylaws as to how to handle that miscalculation or as to who is now the rightful person to participate in that.